Hey everybody, today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Now Surfshark is an award-winning VPN or a virtual private network. What does that mean, you may ask? Well, I use Surfshark for watching all of my drag race. When I'm doing these interviews and this content, I love re-watching everything. I like seeing what these girls are talking about, but the issue becomes that all these Drag Race episodes across the franchises, some are available in the US, some are not available in the US, and that's how it is kind of all over the world. You can only access certain things in certain countries. But that is where Surfshark comes into play. They are an app and a browser extension to basically where you can choose wherever in the world that you wanna be, and you can access the internet from that country. Surfshark also has an extra layer of protection. They're keeping your passwords safe. They're keeping your private data safe. They also have extra layer of security so you don't have to worry about those ads popping up, the pesky malware, and all of those things when you're trying to watch your episode of Drag Race. So make sure to head on over to surfshark.deal slash Joseph to get 83% off and three months free. That's surfshark.deal slash Joseph, enter promo code Joseph for 83% off and three extra months free. Also, they have a 30 day money back guarantee. You can't go wrong. Click the link in the description, check them out, and let's get back to the video. Thank you guys so much to Surfshark. So, so you get on season four of Drag Race, you're having this time. I talked to one of your friends, Willem. He was the first interview that I did for this series. Now, that's not baby. Yeah, and he he had told me some things, and you know, like the whole thing about he was talking about food money that they gave you, and it was very low, and the production quality and everything back at season four was not up to par of what what it is now. And he had nice. mentioned that there was somebody who was working there who didn't know your name. They didn't know our names. They called Latrice La something, this white devil bitch. So I was like, bitch, they're racist. And once I told Latrice and got Chad going, we stood up for ourselves. Is that, is that a true story? These are all true stories. Like this is all like the gospel. Like that day in particular our, was the day that like, we've had several moments where like we popped off on production and producers because it got to the point where we felt like we were being disrespected. Like, are you kidding me? You gave us $30 for nine grown men? Girl, nine grown ass men? Oh, no, ma'am. So that was part of it. And then this, I don't know who this woman was that came in. She came in like midway through and like she was going to be the new sheriff in town. I don't know what she was feeling, but she didn't know any of our names. And like they had these um, lanyards with all of our pictures <laughs> on the lanyard in and out of drag so that they would know who the frick we were. She never even took the time to look at her lanyard. She has it around her neck and didn't know my fucking name. Then she didn't know another girl's name. And when I tell you Chad Michaels, snapped mother dust went left on this hoe let her have it honey she was like no you will you what's her name what she went down our line to every girl what's her name what's her name what's her name you don't even know that's disrespectful don't get out of here like she went left on this woman i, I was, was like, like mm. Mm hmm You better learn it, Linda. You learn it today. <laughs> wow. But, but it's, Funny. Woo. Yeah. That's just it crazy that you said that because everything that you said, like, matches straight with Willem's story. And so, like, a lot of times... You. Yeah, and a lot of times people, like, you know, Willem will speak a story and then people will be like, no, no, that's a lie. That's a lie. It's Willem. It's Willem. And it's like... Mm. So, there you go. Receipts, receipts. <laughs> It's too good to lie about. I mean, the truth is more juicy than trying to like amp it up. It is what it is. I wish that. Were. Yeah. And I mean, you had a lot of highlights during your time on season four. You know, you had the get those nuts away from my face, which was iconic. And then you had mm -hmm. your iconic lip sync of "You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman," which I oh. think was the first time I saw on Drag Race an actual lip sync performance where. There was so much power and not like crazy stunts. Like literally, you embodied the song. 
How did that feel when you actually had to do that? And then the response afterwards? Oh my goodness. I just remember that being one of the most terrifying moments because you're already feeling, okay, you're in the bottom and this is the moment you have to like prove yourself. It's a ballad. It's what I do. It's my song. Like I do Aretha, like it's in my wheelhouse. And I was like, if I get eliminated doing what I do, that's going to be just the ultimate devastation for me. You know what I mean? It was going to be the hugest blow. And I had already made, made up my mind that I was not going to move. I, I knew right away. As soon as I knew I was lifting, I was like, I'm not moving. I'm pregnant. And if we're going to do this, let's do this. And so I just started singing to my baby and it was all in the moment and it just happened and I got done and I felt, I don't know how you can feel like a, like a mom and I'm a man. Like, you know what I mean? I felt like I had just really had a moment and <laughs> it's so weird. But the response once it aired was like from so many women who were like, Oh my God, thank you so much. You encaptured exactly how I felt when I was pregnant. Bob, I never knew and never knew it could be expressed this way. And I, I, it was overwhelming, but it was uh, a wonderful moment in, 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 in drag history. Now, another moment that you ended up having, and I think it was one of the first moments ever on Drag Race where somebody actually opened up a lot about their life and you opened up about you know, going to jail and the moments after that and how that shaped you. Did you do that all on your own? Did you feel so comfortable enough to do that? Or was it kind of like the producers were like, hey, we need a story, like this is where we want things to go? Oh no, absolutely not. It was all on my own because what happened was I didn't know if I was gonna make it on the show. I was really scared that I wasn't gonna be cast because I had a record and I was a felon. And like everything that I had done up until then was a no because I had a felony. And so um, when they said yes, and I was like, this is my redemption at life story and I wanna share it, they were all about it. And so um, I, I, there were no qualms. And like when, when Rue asked me that question, I was just like, oh, you really wanna know? Because we can go there. And he's like, I really wanna know. I was like, and, then I'm, and you saw the rest. You saw how it happened. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that also made you relatable. You know, like, I think that that is a big thing, like being able to relate to a queen and being like, you know, oh, they're a regular person. You know, at the end of the day, I think that is a humongous thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're getting towards the end of season four. You're in a joint challenge with somebody named Willem. And you guys are called up to the front. You win the challenge. <laughs> and then all of this stuff happens. And Willem is called back up. What did you think was actually happening in that moment? I had no idea. We were all like, what's going on? What's, what's happening? What's, what the fuck's going on? What is, what, why, is she going, why is she calling Willem up? And we literally like... Obviously, you saw Untuck was unhinged. Like, that was wow, Untuck. It had just become, everything had come to the surface and was boiling over. And we knew that some shit was going down because production was just acting weird. Everything was weird that day. You know what I mean? Like, you can just feel it was a little off kilter. And I never expected that, though. I just... She was sick and puking next to my feet. And I was just like, girl, you all right? Like, and then they're like, some things have come to my attention and you have violated the rules and you have been banished it, bitch. Banish it. Get your shit and get out. You are banished from the kingdom, honey. I was <laughs> we were gagged. But my biggest question Still to this day, is I wanted to know who would have went home out of Sharon and Phoebe. Because they were in the bottom. And they had lip synced. That would be a different season four ending. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? That would have changed fun. the whole course the of whole her stream. Game. 
Damn.